Hey guys, welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today I want to talk about um, my Xbox Series S video and Bethesda Xbox in general. Uh, now that I've had a couple days to kind of just get my thoughts together and really think about it, uh, <laughs> we've got to stop putting so much pressure on Bethesda to carry the torch for Xbox. Like I get that they're that that Xbox owns them and that they're they're technically first party now. I really do kind of believe that maybe Xbox should recant that and let Bethesda keep doing what they're going to let Activision do when when they acquire them. Because as it sits right now, Bethesda is still pretty much in charge of what Bethesda does and how they do things and how they manage their games and manage expectations. And, uh, and, and I do. I kind of feel bad that the Xbox fans have resorted to having Bethesda carry Xbox on its shoulders for them. And that that really does kind of suck. I mean, I'm not saying that Xbox should put every Bethesda game on PlayStation like day and date. No, do do it. Do the, do the year thing, man. Put them on Xbox for a year and then put them on PlayStation. Whatever. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, all of us putting all of our hopes and, and dreams and, and everything into Bethesda, knowing bethesda's track record and knowing how bethesda does things i i kind of think maybe we need to sit back and chill man like xbox bought all these studios they're 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 looking at the long game they're they're probably more worried about what's going on with uh game pass and getting games into game pass getting people into the ecosystem right now we're at a point where console sales start to drop off they start to they start to just just build momentum over the over the long run like th that initial major hype that, that playstation and xbox had um th they're they're both that way i see playstation 5 on the shelf everywhere i go now everywhere i go there's playstation 5 you do not have to worry about trying to find a playstation 5 they are available xbox series s 100 available the only one i don't ever see is the xbox series x so xbox needs to get some more of these series x's out there um <clears throat> my uh my my video for the uh for the xbox series s you can look at that as more of what what xbox should have done in the beginning they should have just marketed that towards kids and family and the xbox series x towards the uh the regular traditional um xbox experience but as it sits right now man i I I'm coming from a I'm coming from a place of oh man Xbox what are you doing man like what are you doing why why are you doing this to your fans why are you allowing this to happen and and, and a lot of fans like a lot of fans agree that agree with me a lot of people agree with me and then there's a lot of people that that are um, that, that are still 100% like in defensive mode and it's like guys we got to stop doing this we got to stop these stupid nonsense console wars man because it is it is ruining gaming for a lot of people it's ruining gaming for a lot of people and and the playstation fans for the longest time man playstation's been on top and they don't screw up that often they don't playstation doesn't screw up that often nintendo doesn't screw up often enough to where people will 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 be so quick to turn on them i've never seen in my life um so something something like this to where where the xbox fans man <laughs> Like there, there, there's no reason for 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 the Xbox fans to always have to feel like they are doing damage control for Xbox. I bought my Xbox so I could play a game. I bought my Xbox back in 2016 so I could play Forza Horizon 3, Blizzard, Blizzard Mountain. That game was compelling enough for me to buy that console. And since I've bought that. I've had a compelling reason to stay with the Xbox brand and continue to buy their games and buy their products and buy their controllers. And I'm happy. Like I'm, I'm genuinely happy with my Xbox experience. I I'm genuinely happy with my Xbox series S when I, when I, when I was stating that, you know, like the Xbox, you know, holding things back, it's not that I'm saying it's holding back things in terms of game development or game, like, like the, the, how the game is going to turn out in the end. I'm saying that I think that having to spend that extra time to, to develop, 
you know for xbox series s and to optimize and get everything done i feel like it's the reason why games are getting delayed not not that not not that features are being cut or anything like that you know i mean we can we can scream at microsoft all day to uh to 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 make it so they don't force parity uh, across the two platforms but in the end of the day like these games are going to run on xbox series s you got flight simulator running on series s I've seen some amazing, incredible things running on the Series S. So I have no doubt in my mind that Series S is 100% capable to run all next-gen games. It's just how long is it going to take to optimize to make them playable at a, at a playable state that's, that's, that's a quality-feeling product from Xbox First Party Studios on the xbox series s now i know that series s can 100 percent do 1440p at 30 frames a second pretty consistently i know that xbox series x can do 4k at 60 frames a second or 30 frames a second pretty consistently so if we lower that floor again that puts us right back into console console territory where where we are where, where we're pretty much you know some games are going to be the outlier and be higher than that but most games are going to push that that fidelity at 30 frames a second now i hear a lot of you i do i hear a lot of my a, a lot of my uh a, a lot of my community guys saying that they don't care about the 30 frames a second like they, that's not a big deal to them and for the most part as a console gamer yeah i i, I can see how most people could still be fine with that um but then but then i also see the other louder more vocal minority that that has to have that 60 fps i am a believer in <laughs> i i am a believer in fluidity of gameplay now i i've 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 moved past fidelity like i don't care about 4k like i really don't i i don't care about 4k um i am 100 percent happy with with 1440p at 60 frames a second when it comes to my console gaming like i'm happy with that and, and I feel like these consoles are more than more than capable of doing every game that comes out at 60 frames a second um, at, at a lower fidelity. Like, I'm, I'm fine with that. But having a PC also puts me in a different position than, than most of the people in the community. You know, I mean, if a lot of the community is PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S, I have the ability to push past all of that and get full full resolution full 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 gameplay full um fps like i was just barely testing um this game x defiant on the uh, on the pc and uh <laughs> man it looks incredible and it feels great <laughs> it's running ubisoft snowdrop engine and <laughs> it looks it looks really it looks really good for for what they're for for what they're able to do and and i get such high frames that i'm pretty sure it's going to run pretty good on consoles uh, when that when that does launch here, um, I, I should try to see if I can get you know some uh, some code for the for the Xbox and run it on Series S. The Series S is a very important uh, platform for Xbox going forward. It's the affordable entry level Xbox. So as much as it as much as it like uh, as much as it pains people to see like yeah dude games are gonna have to run on the series s this generation there's really not much that that um xbox can do about it i mean if they were if i mean if, if they were gonna do something like that they would have to do it right now they would have to offer people trade in they, they would it, it would cost them some money but they would have to offer um they, they, they would have to they would have to that offer that offer would have to be there they would have to be able to make that um a, re, a reality and they would have to offer solutions to help people get the the xbox experience that they were promised in the beginning like i 100 percent get that and and i know it wouldn't be easy but we've seen microsoft sit behind or stand behind the xbox 360 when they did the when they did the red ring of death so i'm pretty sure that they can with their two trillion dollars could afford to do that but it would be <laughs> it, it wouldn't be um <laughs> It wouldn't be easy, and, and there would be a lot of upset people about that. There, there definitely would, but I think they could split the generation and and do it better, and be able to produce two different two different platforms. You know, one for kids and family, and then one for the for the regular gamer. Like I think they could do it, and I think that I think the gamers would uh, 
I think the gamers would pretty much appreciate that more. You know, people that bought Xbox Series X would have peace of mind knowing that the, the, the their, their games would not have to run on the Series S, so they wouldn't have to worry about that. <clears throat> you wouldn't have developers skip an Xbox because then they could develop for Xbox Series X and PS5, which are pretty close in power and should 100% be able to run the same games, you know, with... Uh, uh, with, with with the same feature set and all of that stuff, whereas the Xbox Series S 100 100 should be able to do that. The only thing that I could really see being a problem is is memory, is video memory, because I'm I'm, and the only reason I think that is because my 3080 10 gig man, like when I'm when I, I can play a lot of games at 4K. I mean there are some games that are designed, you know, with 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 that memory allocation a lot in mind but then there's like when i'm playing 1440p games guys this is this is where things start to change in my mind when i'm playing a 1440p game and i'm running out of vram at max settings that's when i start to think like whoa whoa wait a minute what's what's going on here and then when i try to adjust the the, the settings you know go from high to medium to low and there's really not a big enough difference in visuals to be like to, to get a better a better allocation i'm like whoa wait a minute what's going on here so it's starting to make me feel like uh the, the eight gigabytes of vram for video memory and for because because they got to have this for for uh scale scalability as well so it, it gives it that's that's the only thing that led my thinking to where it is i'm not jumping on no little hate wagon i'm not jumping on no trend i'm not using redfall to try to clickbait anybody to watch my content this is me coming to my community and being like, hey guys, th this this could potentially be a problem uh, with future next gen games. Like like it, it is possible, and, and where everybody points back to like certain games, like like Fortnite or you know the Matrix demo, and and I'm like, wait a minute, guys, the Matrix demo was a pretty small piece of a pie. What if the what if the world is three or four times larger? How does the Xbox Series S play something like that? or fortnite you know fortnite's been running on xbox one for a long time and now all of a sudden it's got uh, nanite and lumen <clears throat> well i'll tell you what when i put nanite and lumen on the pc version and i run that at 1440p i can't max everything out I, it runs under 60 frames a second for me like it starts to fall apart because i don't have the vram allocation to actually run that so <laughs> it's it's one of those things where like where like once we get to a certain point in this generation we are going to see we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna see what what's gonna really happen like there's no 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 other choice like we don't microsoft isn't gonna listen to some old youtuber out in freaking utah that only has less than five thousand subscribers they don't care what i think they don't care they they really don't care uh, but what i can say what i can say up till now is I'm 100% satisfied and happy with both my Series S and my Series X. I'm fine with that. But at the end of the day, I don't know if we should be putting as much pressure on the studios that Xbox has acquired at the end of last generation up till now. Like, I don't... It's not their problem to come in here and hold Xbox on the shoulders. I mean, PlayStation, you know, they, they have Insomniac that was doing really good. They, they pretty much carried the PS5 through the launch of the PS5 window. And now we're starting to get the fruits of the PlayStation labor in terms of, you know, games and, 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 a, and an experience. And all of the things... It's funny, guys. All of the things that I complained about with PlayStation 5 keeping 30 FPS in place, every PlayStation 5 game that I've bought in has come with a 60 FPS mode. Every single one of them. PlayStation is... PlayStation is a lot more in charge of what's going on at PlayStation and with that brand. Now, letting something like... for uh, Letting something like, you know, Forspoken come out, um, that's, that's 100% Square Enix. PlayStation did money had it, but it did have a 60 FPS at launch. I mean, it was, it wasn't perfect by any means, but it, but it, it got the job done as, as well as, you know, a 30, a 30 frames per second, you know, modes that, 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 that did offer higher resolution. Like it did launch that way. 
The only other one that I can really think of being like super disappointing on the PS5 at launch was Returnal. Returnal didn't have a 4K 30 mode. It just had the 1080p upscaled to 1440p and then double upscaled to 4K that really didn't look that great on a 4K screen, which was Returnal. And it and it was like, oh boy, man, that was that's like the the one game that was like, oh man, I can't believe they did this. <laughs> But, but that was so new in the generation that, that like, it was just adding to that, like, me being frustrated because I was expecting a 4K60. I fell for the marketing just like everybody else in the beginning of this generation. And, and I did. I gave PlayStation a really hard time, but it seems like over the long haul, the PlayStation 5 is starting to be, you know, it, it's starting to be like that, that, um, that that consistent experience at least in terms of first party support like 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 it has been pretty consistent so i will give playstation props for that being able to hold things together and you know like they they did stumble man like all of 2021 we we basically they relied on third party content to to get them through that and then we get to 2022 and and they've just been moving forward <clears throat> since then in 2022 they dropped a lot of games they're, they're still continuing to support most of those. We're getting another drop for Horizon for um, Burning Shores here in, in four more days. They've got, you know, Spider-Man 2 that's going to come out this year. There's going to be Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. PlayStation's got another good year ahead of them. And as much as the little Xbox, you know, crazy fanboys over on Twitter and the PlayStation ponies that want to fight each other over on Twitter are concerned that's a pretty good lineup for playstation guys whether those are third-party games or not that is a that, that's a good lineup i mean we we went through all of 22 2022 on xbox pretty much riding the coattails of third-party games and xbox had a good year i had plenty of stuff to play on my xbox it it, it, it it's it's fine sometimes there's going to be years that are going to be first party dry and third party is going to carry them that's the whole beauty of being in the console ecosystem is because we always have something to play the first party games everybody's like xbox first party games are the, the, the sellers you know the exclusives i don't believe that i don't believe that first party exclusives are are the system sellers i believe that call of duty and all of the other big third party games that everybody plays those are the ones that are more of the system sellers and brand loyalty brand loyalty plays a big part of how these consoles are going to be sold xbox is going to gain market share this generation it, it they are the games that they've got coming out are going to be system sellers there's going to be some that are going to be system sellers and then you're going to have stuff like redfall that is going to be a bonus for 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 game pass and and that's the way i'm looking at it right now i don't really i don't really care much for the visual um for, for the visual aesthetic of of redfall but the game the story the gameplay all of that i'm gonna play it on my pc guys i'm not gonna try to play i just i just i struggle playing th first per first person shooters at 30 frames a second so i'm gonna play it on the pc and we're gonna see how how it is and if it's got a good story and a good compelling gameplay and everything then i'll be able to look past the whole visual um the whole visual makeup of the game I, i'll still try it on the series x and the series s and and see how it feels you know kind of i'm looking at this one more as like a batman arkham knight but yeah dude if you're if if you're uh, if you're the person that's gonna pay 70 dollars for this wait till the wait till the 60 fps comes out for it play it on game pass and then wait for it to 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 drop with the 60 fps before you buy it and that's the the exact same <clears throat> that's the exact same thing i told you about gotham knights that's the exact same thing i told you about any of these other games is to wait until it's it's good or wait until the price is is, is a fair price for you to 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 play that game wait till you feel comfortable with paying for that i wanted to own redfall but i'm at this point right now i'm not gonna this is one that i'm just gonna play on the game pass i'm not gonna i'm not gonna buy it <clears throat> at least until the 60 fps comes for the consoles then then maybe i'll buy it and 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 i'll give it a try that way but yeah man first person shooters at 30 frames per second it, it's just too hard for me to to wrap my head around i i i can't i can't do it like i i tried really hard with dying light 2 on the xbox series s i mean it was playable but i had to play it on the monitor for some reason like the monitor 
you know screen doesn't doesn't jitter as much as the uh, as the 4K OLED does. And and I think that I I think that most of that problem really is down to the 4K OLED and the way it handles 30 frames a second because of the instant response time. It just it just makes it seem even more slideshow than than in than ever before. So it it's pretty tough to to try to play that type of an experience at such a low frame rate. So I just I, I can't I can't do that. Uh, but I will be watching, you know, Bethesda and Redfall and all of this stuff as as the generation goes on, and and we will see how this turns out. Like I'm not expecting this to be, um, I'm not expecting this to be like the best generation in terms of like Bethesda software, but I do expect some great things from them. I do expect some great things from from Bethesda. Starfield's looking pretty dang good. That's something where I can change back to third person, so I'll definitely be able to play that one at 30 frames a second if I have to. But I just don't know if we should... I don't know, man. I I, I feel like... I, I don't know if I should if we should just, you know, put that one... That, that must-have 60 FPS for Xbox first-party games. Just because of the fact that, that like... We, we don't know. We don't necessarily know what's going on with that. So I don't know if we should 100% rush to judgment on the whole Xbox thing. But as it sits right now, PlayStation is the number one platform to deliver 60 frames per second with all of their first party games. So if 60 FPS is something that, that is important to you right now, PlayStation is batting 100. The Xbox is, has got two out there that are coming that came in at 30 frames per second. Uh I mean, if you had a VRR screen, you could definitely get like 40 frames per second on um, on uh, Flight Simulator. But man, that that just that that kind of sucks, man. I hate to see things like this happen to Xbox because it's they're already under a freaking microscope. So <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, yeah, everything everything negative is going to be negative, and everything positive is going to be very very small so all right man if you guys like this content don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching